I'm still on a high. I've got to say, I'm just <clears throat> I'm buzzing. I've like been a rugby league man my whole life. It's one of the greatest experiences I've been a part of. What about you, Mister Ludicrous? It was when I'm uh, about to board the plane. I'm looking, and all of a sudden, pictures of you dancing. To who? Just a question. I don't, I don't want to show my uh, who. Who is Ludicrous? To be fair, I don't really know Ludicrous oh, that well. <laughs> look, at, listen to the way you sound. That well either. <clears throat> uh, he's from. He's the actor in Fast and Furious as well. He's one of the actors in it. Right. Uh, and I didn't even know he sung. To be fair, but then he was singing on there, so he didn't have that many. But to be fair, not many hits. He, okay, how many, how many, at that after party, by the way, you look horrendous. You look really, you look, you look, I'll just say it, you look ludicrous. Yeah, you I. You look terrible. Uh, what was it like? What, what was the after party like there? How many people in there? Oh, thousands. Thousands and thousands. Um, I was in a booth with all the Manly boys. We After the game, they had a great win, so they had a big booth, literally the closest booth to Ludicrous. On next to, we were side stage. Ludicrous with all the boys, um, so shout out to the uh, Manly Seagulls for looking after an old boy of the club. Before we before we go on to that, right? <clears throat> just want to say something really important off the top. Shout out to Luke Brooks. Yeah. There's something special about this room. In fact, there's something. Do you remember what we did at the end of you? What at the end of our chats, we asked him to tap either Julian for bad luck or Gabrielle for good luck, Brooksy. Tapped, sweet Gabrielle. Yeah, first one. So. And probably could have played the best game of his career. Good yeah. for you, Gabrielle. So, yeah, so the pretty good signs for Missile. Coming missile up the, will get hand. that million dollars at the old steroid games. Yeah, yeah. So guests to come. Nathan Cleary coming up next too. So yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to be something. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I'm starting to think he's going to really do something. With okay, his okay. Career. Yeah, we'll get to football later. Ludicrous. So, what time did you finish up at Ludicrous? I because I, it's been well, after the flight home and everything. By now, you should have recovered. You talking about? You look like the. Oh, canary I went straight to the airport from after Ludicrous. Yeah. What time did Ludicrous knock off? Oh, I didn't. I don't. I don't know. I I was back. I went somewhere else to another nightclub, and then I had to go and check out at eleven a.m. To my to get to the airport. So you got ludicrous. So eleven a.m. I was in the the at resorts world where we were staying. There's a bar that stays open twenty four seven. So I was there, um, and then before I knew it, the sun was up, and then I had to go to my room and check out, um, and then I had to go show at the airport. Do you think you're a good role model for me? <laughs> well, I wasn't with you, so I I. We that, had a couple of nights out together. Oh, we, we did, a but not nights. ludicrous night. No, no, no. Where were you that night, by the way? Ludicrous night. By then, Coops, I'd have my fill. Well, we did post-game, American time. We didn't finish our post-game till after midnight. Oh, wow. Yeah, after midnight. So we did that. By the time we got back to the hotel, it was 1 o'clock. So, um, you know, me, Fletch, Hindy, and Gordy, we just, we just sat around, had a beer, and sort of reminisced about the uh, reminisced about the week. Because you, you had a great, you had you were you went very hard the first night, so you peaked early, probably because Mum wasn't there. I don't peak the first night. Can I just say I don't? When you get to my age, you don't peak when you're when you're used to. I don't like the word piss fit, but yeah, you know, when you piss fit, you don't peak. What you do is you climb, then you plateau, you and you keep going. There might be little dips and. You know, peaks and dips there, along the way, but I'm pretty consistent. Is there never a crash? I don't I don't crash. Yeah. I don't crash. That so I saw do were you with us at any point on the first night? No. When did I, I first see you? I was with you we had after the first night we did see because we had work the first the sec the, the morning once we flew in there, the next morning we had a I had a heap of audio to get for Kyle and Jackie O the next day, but mm. So I was out working most of the night. Mm. I thought, let's knock it over early so Good then I call. don't have anything else to do. Good call. Uh, but then me and you had an interview on Hello Sport the next morning. Okay. Mm. Do you remember that? Because I, I remember telling you we had it for 10 a.m. We were locked in. And then I didn't hear from you. You never replied confirming that. And you never replied to me in the morning when I rang you like 30 times trying to get you to wake up for it. Do you remember what you may have done that night? Oh, I remember what I did. I did because what had happened, Fletch and I, 
from the first time we were over there, when we came home, we looked so bad that Trish and Britt, his wife, said, we're going to come over. But they had a couple of days in LA, so they arrived Wednesday, which meant we had Tuesday. She had one night, basically. So we arrived We arrived in, in Vegas on the NRL Express at uh, 8 a.m. We got through. <coughs> Excuse me. I was having me, myself, Fletch, Hindy, Wade Graham, Paul Gallen and Andrew Webster were having a beer at 8.30 in the morning. And it just, we kept gathering troops like a rolling stone, gathering moss, gathering people. It got to the point by, we knocked off, I think it was about 4 a.m. And the gang was the same guys, but we had uh, Reedy, Gordy, and Buzz. Buzz Rothfield. Buzz was with us as well. Buzz was on fire. <coughs> Mate, that- I bloody love it. It's all bloody bright lights and uh, give me a lap dance he was he was he was on he was on fire buzz he was very good wasn't there wasn't a single person there who wasn't having the best week of their life or wasn't Mm. out till the very early that's what i love about that place you can do whatever you want and there's like no consequence for your actions or no one's judging no one's judging there, there are consequences but people don't judge you. Yeah, and yeah. everyone was just loving life. I can't re- like I I don't remember you really coming into the room or trying to call me for the Hello Sport interview, but I remember how, like getting down there and how crook I, I was. I was crook there. Took I'll me tell a little, you what, took me a couple of hours to bounce back. Yeah, I, I, like you said, a piss fit seasoned veteran. You performed in that interview though. You really rallied together. You were horrible, guys, 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 guys. It's not about being piss fit. It's about being a TV icon. Yeah, professionalism. Podcast icon. Just by the way, did you listen to any of uh, my work on the Colin Jackie O show when I was crossing over? Hard to listen to the Colin Jackie O show when you're in Vegas. Very, but they do turn it into podcast form. So I thought maybe you may have listened. Cooper, Cooper, Cooper. Over there, there was business after that first night. Bit of pleasure on top. Not enough time to sit there and just relax and what listen to podcasts. Okay, well, it was all systems because go. what I I recorded when I was coming to get you and wake up and because in case I didn't mention it, I rocked up to Dad's hotel and got reception to wake him up and then went upstairs and got him for the Hello Sport interview, and I recorded the whole process of it and sent it back to play on um, Kyle and Jackie O show so they put it together in this beautiful piece. Want, want to say something there, mate? Life. Fans don't like icons being brought down, particularly by their own kids. But I didn't bring you down. It was it, we were acknowledging what you had done, and everyone was very proud of you back in Australia. Here in the audio, I've got the audio. Do you want to listen on your phone? Yeah, I've got it on my phone. I can play it through the roadcaster here. Technology, my God! Do you want me to okay, play it? For it you? A, I'm curious. Get so I don't remember a lot of it. You don't just preparing you for the worst. You don't sound that great in it and because i also recorded when i breathalyzed you mm. so you may you know it's not a great look i just want you to know that or a listen yeah Have a listen. after a big first night in vegas i haven't heard from my father matthew in uh in about 13 hours so i've decided to rock up to his hotel and uh try to get reception to let me up or buzz him to wake him up because uh, to be honest, we're not sh- quite sure where he is. Hey, I am just, uh, I'm looking for my dad. Okay. I've been trying to get a hold of him, uh, and I don't know where he is. He's a hotel guest? He's staying here? He's a hotel guest here, but I was just wondering if we could, like, ring his room or something. Hello, is this Mr. Matthew Johns? This is Rachel at Front Desk. After the lovely lady at reception, helped locate my dead shit father, I decided to head up to his room to surprise him. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Hello. <laughs> Big night last time? Oh, I just had a couple. <laughs> it's, well, it's eight o'clock now. Blow into this. Keep going. <laughs> you ran. I ran out of breath. <laughs> so sorry, officer. It's all right, mate. Don't worry. Get, some, get enough air in those lungs. Okay. Okay, ready? And go. Keep going. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
point one three. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Is that bad? Times on the <laughs> Still. So I think it reads on a legend. <laughs> <laughs> my God, it was a great night. It was, you know, when when uh, that was my partner Kenner in the background. When um, Kyle heard that, he goes, "Oh, you forgot to." Um, you forgot to take out the I didn't part know where the that, I, 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 Sorry, I mixed up Kyle and Buzz then. <laughs> <laughs> really bad impression for me. But he said, you forgot to uh, edit out your dad's escort that was obviously still oh, in the Oh, my room. God. <laughs> your mum doesn't like that sort of stuff. I know. I uh, said, Kyle, mate, he, yeah. she was, the escort was out of the room. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but I'm, I tell you, Coops, it was so good for them a couple of ways, right? The players were outstanding, right? The four teams, the way they mixed with the fans, the way the way they delivered. The fan zone at Fremont Street oh, in yeah. my time in rugby league, I've never seen anything like it. People are coming together. There was a security guy at Fremont Street, and uh, I said to him, mate, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. And he said, I'll tell you something now, man. I've never seen anything like this. Really? And he's a security guy in Vegas. It was just that jammed and that good a oh, good a mood. The Stafford brothers playing. Yeah, you got on stage after G- Gordy first. Yeah, Gordy yeah. got on stage. Gordy didn't cover himself in glory the way he danced, and I thought, well, that's a yeah, that's a low bar. <laughs> I can get up after. They're good guys, Chris and Matt. Yeah, Stafford. they were on a they were on a big week. I I I'll talk about it a little bit later, but I uh, had a night out with their dad and their uncle, just. Legends. The old man was just a champion. So he said, "I said to him because the boys like they play those nightclubs, and there's like two and three thousand people in those nightclubs." He was saying before with the ludicrousy. I said, "Do you come much of this?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah, I just come along." And he said, "Man, it makes you proud of the boys." Yeah, that Fremont Street was so nuts. Like all the boys were walking down a red carpet for like a kilometre, just high fiving fans, and the, it was literally jam packed. Like it was like twenty metres back. There was people up on the gate trying to get pictures. And it was just like 20 metres backed up, just full of Aussies and Americans trying to get pictures with the boys. I was actually on there working, to like interviewing the boys. I tell you what, I love, I would like you to ring your pop, Gary, and explain to him your idea of working compared to his idea of 60 years going down a coal mine. Oh, I, I sort of get the feeling that they're slightly different. As content far as- doesn't create itself, so it does need to be created. But I was sitting there and I'd had... I was pretty on the up of my night and I was, Sieves was walking past and I was just grabbing Sieves and I was asking him where he's going to pass out, uh, <laughs> where he's going to pass out while he's He there. was looking for a McDonald's. All he could find was in and out Burger. I said, mate, there's fast food restaurants everywhere here. You're not short of a place to go to sleep while you're in Vegas. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, no. I don't want to. Hopefully I just fall asleep in my room this time. It's a great night we had out. It just, on the night we did, I did our, uh, our show, our show, our outside show at Resorts World, uh, Gordy Fletch Hindy was awesome. There were thousands there that lined up. It was just a great vibe, really fun. And then we finished, me and Gordy just hiked as quick as we could down to Excalibur to go to Thunder from Down Under. Yeah. Because, you know, going, when we went there last time with Fletch Hindy, it was so much fun. Went there to see the boys again. Man, and, and you were there, like, how much, they are, they were awesome. I said it. I've said it to everyone I saw because everyone when I said I went and watched Thunder from Down Under like with my dad, which was like kind of a weird <laughs> combo to go to Thunder from Down Under. A like, male strip troop with my dad. Yeah. It made me go. And uh, it was probably the best night of my life that night. I reckon. Do you reckon it, it was? Or I reckon that night was the best night in Vegas easily for me, and probably top two nights of my whole life. It was that much fun. I was having the greatest night ever at Thunder from Down Under. Mm. Um, mm. Yeah, and I mean, I could tell. I posted a video to my Instagram and you were having, you were very heavily invested in the Thunder from Down Under. Oh. Your eyes were, you were literally. It's a great show. take your eyes off they're, it. They're, yeah. they're great showmen. Malik and all the boys and big thank you to Jackie and Billy Cross. Yeah. It's, it's their thing. Like, honestly, people who go over there, yeah, like, just go to it. It, it's they're just great performers. You have to see if I go on a boys' trip, 
Mm. I'm 100% taking all the boys there because it was just that much fun. And all the lads after it, the Thunder from Down Under boys are such good lads. There's a bloke there that is a dead ringer of Luke Brooks. Oh, Brooksy, yeah. It was a, it was a big week for Brooksy. Yeah, really good show and then a great show on the field on Saturday night. But he was just such a good fella because I posted a selfie with him. I went, oh, mate, can I get a selfie? He goes, oh, yeah. And I said, you just look exactly like one of the boys that's over here playing. And then I put it up and everyone was just going, oh, and Brooksy saw it. He goes, dude, that dude does look just <laughs> like me. He's just got a bit of body. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. Yeah, he definitely did, actually. And then after at Coops, we went right up with Billy and Jackie. Cross we that. We went to a nightclub. They said, you've got to come to this place and have yeah. a look. I think Billy's part owner in this, this club and went there. And this place has always got a really strong Australian presence because Stafford Brothers play there and Timmy Trumpet. Timmy Trumpet is a legend. I'd, heard, I'd only seen little things with Timmy Trumpet. By the way, Wollongong boy, by the way, and massive rugby league fan. When I walked in, I thought, I, I must say, when I first walked in there, because there were lots of young people. I sound like Grandpa Simpson. Yeah, but there were lots of young people. And I saw Timmy. I wasn't sure what he looked like. Like, like dresses like Bruno Mars. And he come up and tackled me cuddled me and just said, mate, thank you so much for coming to my show. I really appreciate it. And I'm like, Timmy, mate, Timmy, not a, not a drama in the world. I did say, it says, is your surname really Trumpet? And if it is, what nationality is that? <laughs> I don't think. He gets his name because he pulls the the rusty trumpet out and he just starts playing it in the middle of a thing. It's very good. Very good show. It, it's his real- biggest song is Freaks, which like is, that really took off in Australia. Yeah. He's made an incredible career for he and the Stafford brothers have made incredible careers for each other. But but Coops, the the quality of the show he puts on, he was on like a narrow stage and he's doing car wheels backflips and he just pick up the trumpet start playing. But the way that all the songs mash into each other, because he what so just look at you talking like a DJ. Like you just have no, <laughs> yeah. I know you just have zero. Well, I idea felt like after I left it, I thought, man, I think about it. <laughs> You actually had a trumpet for a bit. Remember when you got a trumpet for Christmas and then you tried to learn it, but you couldn't even make a noise? I went to I felt I I went to a trumpet lesson and the young lady who was teaching me, we sat there for forty minutes. I couldn't she was like, yeah, come on, just it's okay and I couldn't even get a sound out. It's of hard. It. Like it's hard to blow a trumpet. Mm. Like it's extremely hard to blow into it and make mm. a noise. It's a te- it's certain technique. My cool. favorite yeah, it is. Um my favourite part of Timmy Trumpet was when uh, Timmy Trumpet got you on stage with him. There's the funniest video of all time. We might actually, because it, it, he put it on his sto- on his Instagram. He's got 2 million followers. So there's just 2 million, probably most from Americans going, who is this little man? <laughs> <laughs> this little man on stage with Timmy Trumpet. But you were up there and you were really like at the ch- dancing you were doing you missed you tried you must have pr- tried to predict the drop of the song and you start dancing with that part mm. but you went a bit early and you just started dancing no. right like a second before the drop went on I, I tell you what happened he said to me will you come on stage with me and i said oh, timmy well it's not a stage we'll sit we'll just sort of behind him behind the desk and it was just like a plank, like, you know, it was like... Yeah, it's like a little platform. Platform. Like tiny. And he said, will you come on with me? And I said, oh, Tommy. Um, Timmy. Timmy, sorry. <laughs> I said, Timmy, I don't know, you know. And he said, uh, if I play Thunderstruck, will you? And I said, yes. So next minute, it starts dilling, and I thought, okay. And got up there. And it, <clears throat> the platform wasn't as wide as I thought. Yeah. But what I did, I was thinking, why? Did, I did this sort of strange strut. And I don't know, I thought, I didn't know exactly where that came from. But thinking back, that's how Brian Johnson from ACDC sort of dances. He dances a bit like that. But then I got there and I thought, well, I'm in Vegas. So I tried to do an Elvis dance and literally nearly went off the platform and it was a 20-foot drop. Yeah, you wouldn't have... You I, I, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have... I mean, somebody else had a quite an accident at Timmy Chuck. We're not going not gonna to give, give too much We're away. not going to say... Because the person who had that accident, who wasn't highly intoxicated, but just went to dance and did a little trip on a stair, and she might have broken her ankle, but she's not back from Vegas yet. I brought her major bag back. She just did a carry-on, but she should be back soon. Uh, she's wearing a moon boot at the moment, Yeah. and her name is Trish, but we're going to let her defend herself. Yeah. We're yeah. going to do... When this comes... We're, we're going to do that... 
on the family podcast. So what stays in Vegas? Uh, what happens in Vegas should stay in Vegas unless that person discloses what happens in yes. Vegas. Is not asked to talk about how Trish broke her ankle. Yeah, yeah. It's we, up to Trish to tell that story. Exactly. How she broke her ankle. Yeah, that's yeah. fine, Jay. Jack's nodding along. That seems fine. Gabrielle, is that fine? Yeah. Julian, you have, you hold yeah. no sway here. She's obviously touched Julian, and then she's had a, quite a tumble. But uh, we'll get her. We'll get her opinion yeah. on that. What a um, the games was just something special. Yeah, phenomenal. What a great stadium that is. Allegiant. 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 Yeah, really. I was in. Where were you sitting? By the way, I, I didn't see you the whole game really. So we did the pre-game on the field, and then after it, we went up. Uh, myself, Fletch, Heidi and Gordy, we went up into the commentary position, which like sits right over the top of the field and watch the games up there, then come down for our post game. Because uh-huh. our post game, they were going to jam, <coughs> excuse me, people in the ground in one bay. We're expecting like you know, five, th- uh, 6,000 people, as much as 10,000 people to be watching the show. But the security officers were overzealous and threw everyone out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Yeah, so we're doing front of nobody. I had a, um, I had one of those passes where it just lets you go. Like we had these yeah. sick tickets, like where we were underneath, and it was just like free everything, food, beers, um, and then I just, I don't even know who gave it to me. I can't even remember. I just ended up having a pass, like that was said I was in the media, which technically I am, I guess, but. I this was very loose term. Very, media. very comparing loose. you to Brent Reed and Buzz. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I suppose uh, media has changed. So I was sitting on the field, just like basically, like I, I was just going out in the field and just like watching the, like going up to the bench and just giving the boys some inspiration. And then after the Manly game, I ended up just, I just walked into the sheds. I didn't even tell them I was coming in. I just walked in. Everyone was going, "What are you doing in here?" Eh? And I was just like, "Mate, I'm an old boy. I'm just coming to give back." And I was just in there chewing the fat with everyone. They were so pumped up. I don't think I've ever seen them in my time there ever be that excited to win a game. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, before we talk about <coughs> the game and some of the performances, I want to give a shout-out to the Gagai family. I saw Ray, uh, of course, Dan Gagai, uh, his brother, um, Jacob Gagai. Jack played with, with Jacob. He's toiled away for so long, finally made his debut at 28 years of age in Vegas on that occasion, and scored a try. Yeah. They didn't win the game, but scored the try. And I saw his dad in the morning down the foyer before Ray. And uh, his Ray, Ray's just just a legend, such a good guy. And he was so emotional. Really? He's really, really He's a very. I played against him a bit in reserve grade. Very good player. He's very good player. Very strong. And I played against Dane as well. Very, like... Both very hard to tackle one on one, just extremely strong. Oh. But also, Dane Shaq, Gagai, hard to tackle. Wow, thanks, Scoop. We'll yeah. put that one up and really sell it on the podcast. Basically, anyone who runs at me, I find hard to tackle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but shout out also, Brandon Smith uh, played a very good game out there, Cheese. But it was also his mum's birthday. Saw so too. Yeah, his yeah. mum was there in the crowd and she was having probably the time of her life. She was. Such a beautiful woman. Yeah, yeah. And it was, she was. Uh, yeah, she was very excited to be in Vegas right. for a bit. Got something for you. In the post game, again, we're probably putting the, the, the cup for the horse here. But post game, we're on the field and it's just, it's quite madness. Like there's things going on. We got Sammy Walker quickly over and Sammy was talking about the game. Next week, Cheese come over and he's on there and talking. He's over all of us and talking, oh, I'm going to go and have a beer tonight. Anyway, <clears throat> then we got Peter Volandis and Andrew Abdo up. So he's talking about stuff. Peter Volandis out of the blue starts going, you know, Velvet Side's going to come back next year. I forget what, um, um, but he said something to, about Fletch and the Roosters, and I just went, "Hey, what about those brown paper bags, right?" <laughs> Fletch is going, "What?" He goes, "Come on, I know what it's about, eh? Those brown paper bags, and there's not, there's not bread in them. We know what it is." And Andrew Abdel, what's his face? He's just going, "Fucking hell!" But I mean, you take it with a grain of salt over there. It was just everyone was on such a such a massive high. Yeah, we said before about Brooksy. Played really good. Jason Saab, he was on the flight over. His mum was on our flight. And we said to her, like, she was upset about him doing his hamstring. It was the best game he's played as an NRL player. Best game, it was the coming of age of Ben Travojevic. Yeah. I thought Ben was really, really See, good. I thought Turbo was really good as well. Yeah. Um, I thought he was outstanding. I know he's probably come under a bit of criticism last after last season. He's had a bit of pressure on his back, but he was so well, outstanding. Look at the difference in the way he moved round one this year 
to last year. Last oh, yeah. year, round one last year, he had no confidence in his legs at all. Mm. Had so many injuries. Just looks physically really like his his kick returns are really good, like really charging in the defence. Yeah. Same big shout out as well. The second game, uh, James Tedesco, someone who's probably in the exact same position as Turbo. Was Unbelievable. Coming under a lot of criticism, but he was phenomenal. The fullbacks, like you know, Latrell made a couple of errors, but man, he looks really fit. Mate, that try, that try, Trell scored. Oh. Was so good. Yeah, he I... looks so powerful. And even at one stage where I've never seen anyone bump Jake Trevojevic, mm. and Trell come off a kick return and just nearly knocked him out. The four, the four fullbacks, right? Like the Broncos, <clears throat> the narrow field, and the narrow dimensions, and and it was six meters, right? And people go, oh, yeah, does it, it makes a massive difference? A meter, two meters makes a difference, but six a lot. And the Broncos, the narrow field just didn't suit their style of football. They just couldn't get their outside men the type of space that they like to give them. Yeah. And as a result, their the yardage game <clears throat> wasn't quite there. They had to put Carrigan on the edge. But there's aspects of their game that you just, you know, they're going to be there. Roosters really impressed me, Coop. Saw that performance come and watched them in the trial game. Particularly when they put the young guys in in the trial game against Manly. They look really strong. Their system of play was really good. And all week at Resorts World, which would have been tricky, I just thought they looked really focused and yeah. played good. And Victor Radley, again, a shout-out to him. He's had a difficult last 18 months, come under some criticism, struggled to adjust his football and find the, find the, um, you know, the, the right mix of aggression and discipline, but he nailed it. Mm. It was one of the best games I've seen Victor play. He, he, was, he was excellent. Yeah. Good mm. on him. I, I've got. I've actually got him uh, to win the premiership. I think. Mm. I, they're going to go close. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Swali'i, watching him, like he had a lot of raps and he's a multi talent But you saw him a few times in the casino. You like Huge. number one, what a beautiful young bloke. Number two, how athletic and mate. Seeing him hit that line a few times, my god. He, he's going to have yeah. a, a and huge... And when Dom seat. Young gets back as well, and Dom, Billy Smith was missing. JWH was missing. Yeah. They're, they're, you can see the Roosters are in for a really big year. South are just got to... South, again, wrestling with the right mix between, you know, um, you know pushing pushing their attack and using their attack and pulling things a little bit. Um, they'll get there. They'll get there. One of the best moments of the weekend was... Uh, the Ch Lachlan Elias' chase on Jason Saab. Oh, yeah. That was mighty. I seen Sabi in the sheds after the game, and uh, he go, he goes, did, oh, did Lucky Elias, like, where was he? <laughs> like, like, he gets real, like, he loves being the fastest man on the field. Yeah. So he was like, where did he start? And I G'd him up. I was like, mate, you were, like, you actually had a head start on him. He he chased you down, even though, obviously, Lucky was about 50 metres in front of him mm. when he ankle tapped Sabi. But the narrow field helped yeah. Lucky there. Like, he, he, you know, like, if it had been a little bit wider, Jace probably would have bat. Look, it's not taking anything away. Uh, but it was just, it Great was week. fantastic. Can't wait for the next one. I want to I say something, Coops. Well, firstly, before I say something, I want to finish on something. Is um, what team should go there next year? I think the Warriors deserve to be there. I think the Warriors, I, I think that's, I don't know who else, but I think, Warriors are the first team yeah. I put on the plane. I'd go Warriors, Penrith, Storm, because uh, I think that's always a really good game to watch, Penrith and Storm. So I reckon the American fans are like that. And yep. a lot of big name rugby league players in it. But we've got, in my opinion, we've got to sell it that rugby league is just not a, 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 a just not a male game. I would do this. I'd make it a double header like Magic Round. I would have the World Club Challenge and an NRLW game on the Friday. And on the Saturday, I would have the... Um, have four NRL teams have a game. Wow. I think, be, I think that'd be really, really good. Last thing I'd like to say is this, like, it, it sort of, it's funny, you know, I, I, how old am I, 52? 53. What year is it this year? 2024. 20, yeah, I'm 52. Oh. I turned, yeah. It, like, my whole life's been rugby league, right? And for me, um, to sit, and watch that. I, I I found myself really emotional. It was like sort of let melt meant a lot to me because you know, for whatever reason, it's getting embarrassing. It must be able to fly home. <laughs> but also for people like you know, there's a guy called um, Steve Mascord. <clears throat> All rugby league people know who Mascord is. Mascord <clears throat> has been a rugby league zealot his whole life, right? 
He's lived a gypsy lifestyle. Wherever rugby league's been played, he'll fly there and watch it. Serbia, Turkey, everywhere. It doesn't matter. He'll go to parks to watch it play. He's got a book called Touchstones. He's, <coughs> his two passions in life are rock and roll and rugby league. And um, I saw Mass Court after the game when I went and had a beer. And he was sitting there and I went up and I, I said to him, I said, Mass Court, I said, look, in my opinion, this was one of the greatest nights in the game's history. And he said, he said, Matty, he said, he said, there's a few things that match that. He said, he, he said significant moments in rugby league history. The game becoming a third in a side code and breaking away, becoming in the north of England. He said a few other things, I remember. But he, he said the advent, uh, the invention of state of origin football. He said, but tonight sits alongside that. And I just, I, I totally agree. I was, I, I thought it, but I thought I'm probably exaggerating it. I'm, but when a bloke like Steve Mascord says it, then I totally believe it. Yeah. I think it's about to take the game to a whole nother level. I, I, reckon, I really hope that they just really keep investing into this idea because if it, if the game, if the Americans and the rest of the world get to see how good it is, mm. I think it's just going to take off. I'll put the button on like this. Peter Volandis, what he's done for the game has been unbelievable. And confirmation of that, when we flew in, uh, a mascot in Sydney, the pilot said... I hope everyone had a great time in Vegas. Thank you for flying with Qantas. And we just want to send a thank you to the NRL, <coughs> Peter Volandis. And the whole plane just erupted with applause. And I've I've never heard that before for, for an administrator. So. Wow. <coughs> Keep coughing into that mic. I well. know. <laughs> Thanks, I'm starting mate. to. Yeah. I'm, but awesome. Yeah. Can't, I can't wait for next year. There are 20 odd. Some like 22, 23, 25,000 Australians there for Matt for that uh, for that event. Yeah, I reckon there'll be 40 or 50 next time. Bloody oath. Magic Round next. Yeah. Very excited for Magic Round. Brett, hope well. you recover in time. I will be. I'll mm. be good. See you, Matthew. Shout out to Ludacris. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs>